Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, a teaching ministry that focuses on God's unconditional love and grace. It's like he was just putting the pieces together for me in such a way that just was simple but powerful. And I was like, yeah, this is, this is God's truth right here. It wasn't always what I, what I wanted to hear, but I knew it was the truth, and I always wanted the truth. And now, here's Andrew. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. Today, I'm in the middle of my second week of teaching on effortless change. I tell you, this is one of my favorite things to teach on. This is one of the very first things that God began to work in my life and any good thing that has happened in my ministry over the last 53 years is because of these truths that I'm sharing with you. And I've already covered a lot of material. I tell you, a lot. You need to go to our website and either listen to the past broadcasts. They're archived on there. Or you can go and get all of these materials. You can listen to them free of charge. Or you can call or write and request these materials. But you need to have this and go back over it. I've been teaching out of Mark chapter 4, and I've, I've focused on two parables. One is in Mark 4, 26 through 29, and then the next one was in uh, Mark 4, 30 through 32. And I've been focused on this for 10 days now. I want to back up and go to the parable in Mark chapter 4 about where Jesus taught about a man who sowed seed. And in the first part of Mark chapter 4, he gave this parable, just talked about a man who took seed, and they didn't plant seed the way we do today where you dig a furrow and you space your seed out. They just had a bag, and they would take this seed, and they'd just scatter it and throw it like this. And that seed would land on whatever. And so the parable was that a man took seed and threw it, threw it, and it landed on four different types of soil. One was hard-packed soil on a wayside. That means a path where the earth was so packed so tightly that the seed never penetrated and got into the ground. It just laid on the surface, and the birds came and ate that seed. The second type of ground it landed on was where there was a lot of rocks, and so there was a little bit of depth. The seed was able to germinate, but it didn't have enough room to put down roots because the ground was so rocky, and so it couldn't bring any fruit uh, to completion. The third type of ground was where it was good ground, but there were so many weeds and thorns that the weeds and the thorns choked the seed that was sown, and so it didn't bring forth any fruit. The fourth type of ground was where it landed on good ground, and it brought forth uh, fruit 30, 60, and 100 fold. So that's the parable that Jesus gave. When his disciples got him apart, they said, why are you speaking to these people in parables? Why don't you just tell them clearly what you are saying? And um, he gave a number of things here, but one of them, he basically said that you have the ability. It's like it, it's given in code, but you have the, the ability to break this code. The Holy Spirit will reveal these things to you. It's not kept from you. It's kept for you. And then he said that this people, I'd like to just read, it said these people's heart has waxed growths. I think that's over in Matthew's account of this. The same thing is recorded in Matthew uh, chapter 13. And uh, it says there that these people's heart has waxed gross and their ears are dull of hearing and they can't see with their heart. And then he said this here in Mark chapter 4, after he had said these things, in verse 13, he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will ye know all parables? Now, this is really significant. Right before I get into the interpretation and the application of this parable to us, this is significant. Jesus is basically saying, if you can't understand this parable of the sower sowing the seed, then you won't be able to understand any of his parables. This is like the key. This is the key to unlocking all of the parables that Jesus gave. So this is foundational. And I can say that in my own life, when the Lord showed these things to me, I had some revelation of this uh, back probably when I was in Vietnam. But I remember Jamie and I got married on uh, October the 27th, 1972, and it was right after that. It was probably November or December of 1972 that the Lord spoke to me through this parable and gave me one of the keys 
THAT I HAVE USED IN MY LIFE EVER SINCE. FOR 48 YEARS, THIS HAS BEEN A MAJOR INFLUENCE IN MY LIFE. SO I REMEMBER THAT TIMING BECAUSE IT WAS RIGHT AFTER I GOT MARRIED. SO ANYWAY, THIS IS ALL ABOUT THE WORD OF GOD AND HOW THAT THE WORD OF GOD WORKS IN OUR LIFE. SO IN VERSE 14, HE BEGINS THE INTERPRETATION OF THIS PARABLE TO HIS DISCIPLES, AND HE SAID, THE SOWER SOWS THE WORD. SO THIS IS REALLY NOT A INSTRUCTION ABOUT HOW TO SOW SEED AND GET A PHYSICAL CROP. IT'S USING SOMETHING THAT PEOPLE UNDERSTOOD, THIS NATURAL LAW OF SOWING SEED AND REAPING TO ILLUSTRATE HOW THE KINGDOM OF GOD WORKS. THE KINGDOM OF GOD WORKS OFF OF THE WORD OF GOD BEING LIKE A SEED, THE SAME AS IN THE NATURAL REALM, THAT THIS SEED IS ESSENTIAL TO ALL LIFE AS WE KNOW IT. WELL, LIKEWISE, ALL VICTORY IN THE CHRISTIAN LIFE IS REALLY DEPENDENT UPON THE WORD OF GOD. THERE'S PEOPLE THAT WOULD TAKE ISSUE WITH THAT. THERE'S SOME PEOPLE THAT SAY, OH, NO, IT'S ABOUT PRAYER. OH, NO, IT'S ABOUT HOLY LIVING. IT'S ABOUT ALL OF THESE THINGS. WELL, CERTAINLY WE ARE SUPPOSED TO PRAY. CERTAINLY WE ARE SUPPOSED TO DO WHAT'S RIGHT. BUT I BELIEVE THAT THE WORD OF GOD IS THE MOST FOUNDATIONAL THING. IF YOU'RE PRAYING LARGE PERIODS OF TIME, BUT IF YOU AREN'T PRAYING ACCORDING TO THE WORD OF GOD, IT'S NOT GOING TO PRODUCE. AND IF YOU'RE LIVING HOLY, BUT IF YOU AREN'T DOING IT WITH THE UNDERSTANDING THAT THE WORD OF GOD GIVES, THAT OUR ACTIONS SHOULD BE A BYPRODUCT OF WHAT WE HAVE WITH GOD, NOT SOMETHING THAT WE EARN. IF YOU ARE USING YOUR HOLINESS AS SOMETHING LIKE COMMODITY THAT YOU'RE SAYING, GOD, I'VE LIVED HOLY, NOW YOU'VE GOT TO GIVE ME THIS. MAN, THAT'S AGAINST EVERYTHING THE WORD OF GOD TEACHES. THE WORD OF GOD NEEDS TO INFLUENCE OUR ACTIONS. IT NEEDS TO INFLUENCE OUR PRAYERS. THE WORD OF GOD IS THE FOUNDATION ABOVE EVERYTHING. AND THE KINGDOM OF GOD IS DEPENDENT UPON THE WORD OF GOD THE WAY THAT THIS PHYSICAL WORLD IS DEPENDENT UPON PHYSICAL SEED. SO HE BEGINS TO START EXPLAINING THIS PARABLE. AND SO THE INTERPRETATION IS THAT THE SEED IS EQUAL TO THE WORD OF GOD. THE GROUND IS EQUAL TO THE CONDITION OF OUR HEART. AND THERE WERE FOUR DIFFERENT TYPES OF GROUND OR FOUR DIFFERENT TYPES OF HEARTS THAT THIS SEED, THE WORD OF GOD, FELL UPON, AND ONLY ONE OUT OF FOUR PRODUCED FRUIT. AND EVEN IN THAT ONE THAT PRODUCED FRUIT, THERE WAS VARYING DEGREES OF FRUIT IN THAT. SO LET ME JUST GIVE SOME GENERALIZATIONS BEFORE I GET INTO THE SPECIFICS ON THIS PARABLE. ONE OF THE THINGS TO LEARN OUT OF THIS IS THAT EVEN THOUGH THE SEED IS AN INCORRUPTIBLE SEED, 1 PETER CHAPTER 1, VERSE 23 SAYS, BEING BORN AGAIN, NOT OF CORRUPTIBLE SEED, BUT OF INCORRUPTIBLE SEED, BY THE WORD OF GOD THAT LIVES AND abides FOREVER. THE SEED, THE WORD OF GOD, IS NEVER THE PROBLEM. IT'S NEVER THE WORD OF GOD THAT DOESN'T WORK. BUT THE SEED DIDN'T PRODUCE FRUIT IN ALL OF THESE INSTANCES, NOT BECAUSE THERE WAS ANYTHING WRONG WITH THE WORD, BUT THERE WAS SOMETHING WRONG WITH THE GROUND. IT IS NEVER THE WORD OF GOD THAT FAILS. IT'S PEOPLE'S HEARTS THAT FAIL. WE'RE HARD-HEARTED. WE DON'T HAVE ROOT IN THE WORD OF GOD. WE LET THE CARES OF THIS LIFE AND OTHER THINGS CHOKE THE WORD. IT'S ALWAYS US THAT KEEPS THE WORD FROM WORKING. THE WORD IS INCORRUPTIBLE. IT NEVER FAILS. AND THERE'S A NUMBER OF THINGS THAT YOU CAN DRAW FROM THAT, BUT ONE OF THEM I WANT TO SAY IS THAT YOU KNOW WHAT? YOU, REGARDLESS OF WHAT COUNTRY YOU LIVE IN, REGARDLESS OF WHETHER YOU ARE IN A PLACE THAT DOESN'T HAVE THE SAME OPPORTUNITIES AS OTHER PEOPLE, IF YOU LIVE IN A CASTE SYSTEM AND THERE'S CERTAIN PEOPLE THAT JUST HAVE ACCESS TO THINGS THAT YOU DON'T HAVE ACCESS TO, IF YOU WERE THE uh, COLOR THAT'S NOT BEING... uh, YOU KNOW, EMBRACED AND THERE'S PREJUDICE AGAINST YOU. IF YOU'RE THE WRONG GENDER IN SOME CULTURES, uh, WOMEN DON'T HAVE THE SAME OPPORTUNITY. IT DOESN'T MATTER WHAT THE PHYSICAL THINGS ARE OUT HERE. THE INCORRUPTIBLE SEED OF THE WORD OF GOD HAS THE EXACT SAME POTENTIAL IN YOUR LIFE AS IT HAS IN ANYBODY ELSE'S LIFE. AND I KNOW THAT THERE'S SOME PEOPLE WATCHING THIS THAT MAY TAKE ISSUE WITH THAT AND SAY, NO, YOU'RE IGNORANT OF THESE CULTURES AND OVER IN INDIA OR SOMEPLACE, WOMEN JUST DON'T HAVE THE SAME OPPORTUNITIES. I I BELIEVE THAT THE WORD OF GOD WILL WORK. YOU KNOW, IT WAS INDIRA GANDHI THAT WAS PRIME MINISTER OF INDIA AND SHE ROSE TO THE TOP. THERE'S EXAMPLES. YOU CAN BREAK WHATEVER BARRIER, WHATEVER CEILING THAT PEOPLE HAVE PUT ON YOU. IT DOESN'T MATTER. THE WORD OF GOD IS SO POWERFUL. IT'S GREATER THAN WHATEVER YOU ARE DEALING WITH. 
This will work for anybody in any circumstance under any conditions. The Word of God never fails. It's incorruptible. It's only the ground that determines whether that Word reaches its full potential or not. So the first type of ground that was mentioned in verse 15, it says, And these are they by the wayside where the Word is sown, but when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the Word that was sown in their heart. Let me turn over here to Matthew chapter 13 and read this exact same thing to you out of Matthew's account. It's the same principle. It's just a different account of it. And in Matthew chapter 13... And in verse 18, it says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. So Matthew gives a little bit of detail that Mark didn't give. And notice it says that this is the person who heard the word of the kingdom, but understood it not. Now that was left out over here in Mark's account. But you put them together, they don't contradict each other. They complement each other. And so you can say that the only type of person that Satan had access to, to steal the Word out of their heart, were those that didn't understand it. So here's some important things. That understanding is absolutely critical to having the Word of God work in your life. You don't just sit here and recite the Word without it, without you understanding what you're saying, without you knowing what you're doing. There are some people that use the Word of God like a mantra. I remember one time in one of my services, I was praying for a person and they had some demonic problems and these demons manifested. And I mean, I, I had my eyes closed, but later some people told me that this person I was praying for was trying to hit me and they just couldn't do it. It was like... Somebody was stopping them, and yet you couldn't see this. I believe it was the Lord protecting me. And anyway, when this person started screaming and started doing things, people all around me, I mean, they started saying, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. And they started repeating the Lord's prayer so fast. And there is no virtue in doing that unless it's coming out of your heart. But there are some people that use the Word of God, you know, like, in these movies about the vampires and this, this vampire is coming after them and they hold up a cross or they hold up a Bible and the vampire just shrieks back. I guarantee you that, you know, of course, vampire, the whole stuff isn't real, but I'm saying the Word of God's not like that. The devil's not afraid of this Bible. He translated a number of these Bibles. He's led people to mistranslate and do things. He's not afraid of the Word on a page, but He's afraid of it when it gets in your heart. You've got to understand it. It's got to become more than just you reciting some rosary or repeating some prayer or quoting some scripture. It's got to be a part of you. And so the very first step in getting the Word of God on the inside of you is it's got to pass by your understanding. Over there in Matthew chapter 13, verse 19, the only one that Satan had access to to just steal the word away from them at his pleasure were people that didn't understand. And this is why that we have children's church. This is, you're you're not changing the message. You're still preaching the exact same thing, but you're using things that that child can understand. Like if you try and teach children, you know, about do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. And then you start using examples in marriage and start talking about how that a husband's supposed to treat his wife and things like this. Did you know kids haven't experienced that yet? That doesn't apply to them. So you take an example that they could relate to, talking about their friends and sharing their toys or doing something like that. You don't change the message, but you change the illustrations. You use things that people can understand. As a matter of fact, that's the reason that the Lord used this parable because it was something that these people could understand. They lived in an agricultural society where just about every single one of these people grew some vegetables or something. And they understood this thing about planting seeds and then waiting and seeing a harvest come out of it. He was using something that people could understand. So when you minister, you've got to minister in a way that people can understand what you're saying. 
I GREW UP IN A HIGHBROW BAPTIST CHURCH THAT REALLY PUT A GREAT EMPHASIS ON EDUCATION AND STUFF. AND EVERY TIME THAT WE HAD THE PASTOR AWAY AND SOMEBODY FILLED THE PULPIT, THEY WOULD GO GET A SEMINARY PROFESSOR FROM SOUTHWESTERN BAPTIST THEOLOGICAL SEMINARY OVER IN FORT WORTH. AND THESE PEOPLE WOULD COME AND PREACH. AND I MEAN, THEY JUST THOUGHT SOMEHOW OR ANOTHER IT MADE THEM LOOK IMPORTANT. IT MADE THEM LOOK LIKE THEY KNEW WHAT THEY WERE DOING IF THEY USED THESE WORDS THAT NOBODY UNDERSTOOD. I MEAN, YOU'D HAVE THESE SEMINARY PROFESSORS COME, AND YOU WOULD LITERALLY HAVE TO SIT THERE WITH A DICTIONARY OR SOMETHING TO UNDERSTAND WHAT THEY WERE TRYING TO SAY. AND PEOPLE WOULD JUST SAY, OH, THAT'S DEEP. AND THEY WOULD THINK, MAN, AREN'T THEY REALLY SMART? I THINK IT'S JUST THE OPPOSITE, THAT IF YOU'RE GOING TO BE AN EFFECTIVE COMMUNICATOR, YOU'VE GOT TO SPEAK ON A LEVEL THAT PEOPLE CAN UNDERSTAND. AND IF THEY DON'T UNDERSTAND IT, SATAN JUST COMES IMMEDIATELY AND STEALS AWAY. THEY MAY GIVE YOU A PAT ON THE BACK, AND THEY MAY THINK YOU'RE AWESOME, BUT THE WORD OF GOD'S NOT GOING TO WORK UNLESS YOU CAN MAKE IT SIMPLE. I'VE HAD SO MANY PEOPLE COME TO ME AND SAY, MAN, YOU JUST MAKE THE WORD REALLY SIMPLE. THAT'S BECAUSE I'M PRETTY SIMPLE. (laughs) AMEN. IT'S GOT TO BE SIMPLE FOR ME TO UNDERSTAND IT. BUT YOU'VE GOT TO UNDERSTAND THE WORD OF GOD BEFORE YOU CAN RECEIVE IT. AND SO THERE, YOU KNOW, THERE'S MANY DIFFERENCES BETWEEN A PREACHER AND A TEACHER. BUT I'VE HEARD THIS EXPLANATION THAT A PREACHER PROCLAIMS, A TEACHER EXPLAINS. IT'S ONE THING TO PROCLAIM, AND THERE'S A PLACE FOR THAT. I'VE BEEN IN SITUATIONS WHERE, YOU KNOW, I WANT TO JUST EXPLAIN EVERYTHING TO PEOPLE, AND IT MAY BE A SITUATION WHERE IT'S NOT TIME TO EXPLAIN. YOU JUST NEED TO STAND UP AND MAKE THE PROCLAMATION. AND THERE ARE SOME PEOPLE THAT DO THAT MUCH, MUCH BETTER THAN I DO. BUT YOU'VE GOT TO NOT ONLY PROCLAIM LIKE THAT GOD SENT JESUS AND HE DIED FOR YOUR SINS, BUT THEN YOU'VE GOT TO EXPLAIN TO PEOPLE, HOW DO YOU APPROPRIATE THIS? HOW DOES IT WORK IN YOUR LIFE? IT'S ONE THING TO SAY THAT GOD WANTS YOU WELL, BUT IT'S ANOTHER THING TO EXPLAIN, HOW DO I GET WELL? HOW DO I RECEIVE THIS HEALING? SEE, IT'S THE JOB OF A TEACHER. THAT'S MY DOMINANT GIFT THAT GOD'S GIVEN ME IS TO EXPLAIN THINGS AND HELP PEOPLE UNDERSTAND. IF YOU CANNOT UNDERSTAND THE WORD OF GOD, SATAN IS GOING TO COME IMMEDIATELY AND STEAL THAT WORD AWAY FROM YOU. AND SAD TO SAY, THERE ARE A LOT OF PEOPLE IN THE BODY OF CHRIST THAT THEY MAY HAVE HEARD THAT GOD HEALS. THEY MAY HAVE HEARD THAT GOD WANTS TO BLESS YOU AND PROSPER YOU. THEY MAY HAVE HEARD SOME OF THESE THINGS. THEY COULD TELL YOU, YES, I BELIEVE IT'S GOD'S WILL, BUT THEY DON'T HAVE ANY UNDERSTANDING ABOUT HOW TO GET IT WORKING IN THEIR LIFE. AND SATAN HAS COMPLETE ACCESS TO THEM. THIS IS THE FIRST TYPE OF PERSON THAT THIS SEED FELL ON, THE FIRST HEART. IT WAS JUST SO HARDENED THAT IT NEVER PENETRATED. IT NEVER GOT BELOW THE SURFACE. IT WAS JUST LAYING THERE. AND SO THE BIRDS OF THIS AIR, WHICH IS SYMBOLIC OF SATAN, WAS ABLE TO COME AND JUST TAKE THE WORD FROM THEM AT WILL. AND SAD TO SAY, THERE'S A LOT OF CHRISTIANS LIKE THIS THAT THEY'VE BEEN IN CHURCH FOR 20, 30, 40 YEARS, BUT THEY HAVE NO UNDERSTANDING, AND THE WORD ISN'T WORKING FOR THEM. THERE'S A LOT OF PEOPLE THAT IF THEY WERE ARRESTED FOR BEING A CHRISTIAN, THERE WOULDN'T BE ENOUGH EVIDENCE TO CONVICT THEM. THEY'RE JUST AS DISTURBED, JUST AS FEARFUL, JUST AS BITTER, JUST AS HURT, JUST AS SICK, JUST AS POOR AS THE PEOPLE AROUND THEM THAT DON'T EVEN KNOW THE LORD. THE WORD OF GOD HASN'T EVER PENETRATED THEIR HEART. AND SAD TO SAY, SO MUCH OF OUR CHRISTIAN EXPERIENCE TODAY IS LIKE THAT. PEOPLE GO TO CHURCH AND THEY GO THROUGH THE RITUALS. YOU KNOW, THIS IS THE REASON I'M AGAINST A LOT OF THE LITURGICAL CHURCHES, AND I'M SURE THAT THERE'S SOME PEOPLE THAT FIND SOME uh, BENEFIT OUT OF THAT, BUT A LOT OF THIS LITURGICAL STUFF YOU GO THROUGH AND YOU READ CERTAIN THINGS, AND THE MINISTER WILL SAY SOMETHING, AND YOU'LL SAY SOMETHING BACK, AND IT'S JUST RITUALS THAT YOU GO THROUGH. PEOPLE TAKE THESE ROSARIES AND JUST PRAY THE, THE SAME PRAYER OVER AND OVER, BUT THEY HAVE NO UNDERSTANDING OF WHAT THEY'RE SAYING. THAT'S JUST RELIGIOUS. YOU'VE GOT TO UNDERSTAND. AND I KNOW THAT THERE'S PEOPLE WATCHING THIS PROGRAM RIGHT NOW THAT, BOY, YOU'RE RELATING TO WHAT I'M SAYING. YOU'VE BEEN GOING THROUGH THE MOTIONS, AND YOU'VE BEEN RELIGIOUS, BUT YOU DON'T REALLY UNDERSTAND HOW TO GET THE WORD OF GOD WORKING IN YOUR LIFE. IT'S LIKE THERE ISN'T A HANDLE ON THE THING. YOU CAN'T can't GRAB HOLD OF IT AND MAINTAIN IT. UNDERSTANDING IS IMPORTANT. THE BOOK OF PROVERBS SAYS, WISDOM IS THE PRINCIPAL THING. THEREFORE, GET WISDOM, AND WITH ALL OF YOUR GETTING, GET UNDERSTANDING. YOU NEED TO UNDERSTAND. THAT'S IMPORTANT. 
AND IF YOU DON'T HAVE ANY UNDERSTANDING, THEN YOU AREN'T GOING TO HAVE THE WORD OF GOD WORKING IN YOUR LIFE. WE NEED MORE TEACHERS THAT CAN EXPLAIN AND CONNECT THE DOTS AND SHOW PEOPLE HOW TO GET THE WORD OF GOD WORKING IN YOUR LIFE. YOU KNOW, THIS IS WHAT I'M DOING THROUGH THIS SERIES ON EFFORTLESS CHANGE. EVERYBODY, OR LET ME SAY MOST PEOPLE, RECOGNIZE THAT WE NEED TO CHANGE, THAT THERE'S SO MUCH MORE THAN WHAT WE'VE EXPERIENCED, AND THEY'RE PRAYING FOR IT. THEY MAY BE BEGGING FOR IT. THEY MAY BE FASTING. THEY MAY BE GOING, RUNNING FROM CONFERENCE TO CONFERENCE, JUST WAITING ON SOMEBODY TO GIVE THEM WHAT THEY NEED, BUT THEY DON'T UNDERSTAND WHAT THE WORD OF GOD TEACHES. THAT'S WHAT THIS WHOLE PARABLE IS ABOUT, HOW THAT THE WORD OF GOD IS WHAT WILL BRING THIS CHANGE IN YOUR LIFE. BUT YOU'VE GOT TO GET IT BELOW THE SURFACE. YOU'VE GOT TO OPEN UP YOUR HEART AND RECEIVE IT ON A HEART LEVEL. AND THEN THERE'S THREE OTHER LEVELS THAT THIS GOES THROUGH. I COULD ALSO SAY THIS OUT OF THIS PARABLE, THAT I BELIEVE THAT THESE ARE PROGRESSIVE STEPS THAT EVERYONE GOES THROUGH. I DON'T THINK THAT ANYBODY STARTS BEING GOOD GROUND FOR THE WORD OF GOD JUST AUTOMATICALLY. BUT WE GO THROUGH THESE STAGES. THE VERY FIRST ONE is a, IS a STAGE WHERE YOU JUST DON'T UNDERSTAND ANYTHING. IT'S JUST, YOU KNOW, IT'S JUST LAYING ON THE SURFACE AND SATAN COMES AND STEALS THE WORD FROM YOU. THEN THE SECOND TYPE, I'LL GO INTO THIS IN MORE DETAIL ON MY PROGRAM TOMORROW, BUT THE SECOND TYPE IS WHERE THE WORD OF GOD DOES PENETRATE. IT STARTS HAVING SOME RESULTS, BUT THERE'S NO ROOT. THERE'S NO DEPTH OF ROOT. YOU DON'T HAVE THE NOURISHMENT TO SUSTAIN IT, AND SO YOU DON'T SEE THE WORD OF GOD WORK. THE NEXT ONE IS THAT YOU you DO HAVE GOOD GROUND, BUT YOU'VE ALSO GOT THORNS AND WEEDS THAT CHOKE AND TAKE AWAY THE NOURISHMENT, AND SO YOU STILL DON'T BEAR ANY FRUIT. THE FOURTH TYPE OF PERSON IS A PERSON WHO HAD GOOD GROUND, AND THE GOOD GROUND WASN'T BECAUSE IT HAD MORE, IT'S BECAUSE IT HAD LESS, LESS HARD-PACKED DIRT, LESS ROCKS, AND LESS WEEDS. AND BECAUSE OF IT, IT BROUGHT FORTH FRUIT, AND THAT'S WHERE THE FRUIT CAME UP. ONLY 25% OF THE PEOPLE THAT THE WORD CAME TO SAW ANY FRUIT AT ALL COME OUT OF THIS. AND DID YOU KNOW, SAD TO SAY, I BELIEVE THAT THIS IS SIMILAR TO THE WAY IT IS TODAY. I'VE OFTEN HEARD THAT 20% OF CHURCH MEMBERS DO 80% TO 100% OF THE WORK, THE GIVING, AND EVERYTHING ELSE. IT'S A VERY SMALL PERCENTAGE THAT ACTUALLY MAKE THE CHURCH WORK. I HEARD BILLY GRAHAM SAY ONE TIME THAT HE THOUGHT ONLY 20% OF THE PEOPLE WHO CAME TO HIS MEETINGS AND PRAYED THE SINNER'S PRAYER AND WENT THROUGH THE MOTION, ONLY ABOUT 20% OF THEM WERE PROBABLY BORN AGAIN. AND I BELIEVE THAT IF YOU LOOK AT PEOPLE, THE WAY THEY LIVE, THE WAY THEY VOTE AND DO THINGS, I WOULD AGREE WITH THAT, THAT THERE'S A LARGE, LARGE NUMBER OF PEOPLE THAT PROFESS TO BE CHRISTIANS, BUT THEY DON'T POSSESS IT. IT'S NOT REAL ON THE INSIDE OF THEM. SO THESE ARE STAGES THAT YOU GO THROUGH, AND and YOU'VE GOT TO... THE VERY FIRST STEP IN GETTING THE WORD OF GOD IN YOUR HEART AND WORKING IS YOU'VE GOT TO UNDERSTAND IT. THAT'S THE REASON THAT I PUT OUT ALL OF THESE MATERIALS. THAT'S THE REASON I'VE WRITTEN THIS BOOK, IS TO HELP GIVE YOU UNDERSTANDING. AND I ENCOURAGE YOU TO PLEASE GET THIS. THIS WILL CHANGE YOUR LIFE. I'VE GOT THIS IN ENGLISH AND IN SPANISH. WE'VE ALSO GOT A STUDY GUIDE THAT IS THE EXACT SAME MATERIAL, BUT IT'S REFORMATTED SO THAT YOU CAN TEACH OTHER PEOPLE. IT'S A LARGER DEAL, AND IT WILL BASICALLY uh, GIVE YOU QUESTIONS TO ASK, AND IT JUST works, WALKS YOU THROUGH THIS. AND THEN WE ALSO HAVE DVDs AND CDs ON THIS, AND I PROMISE YOU, THIS WOULD HELP YOU TO UNDERSTAND. SO LISTEN TO OUR ANNOUNCER AS HE GIVES YOU SOME INFORMATION ABOUT THIS PRODUCT, AND PLEASE CALL OR WRITE TODAY. ANDREW'S ENTIRE SERIES, EFFORTLESS CHANGE, is available as a book in either English or Spanish, or as a CD or DVD album made from our daily television broadcast. You can also get this teaching as a companion study guide in English or Spanish. Each of these valuable resources are available for a gift of any amount when you contact us. Andrew's book, Effortless Change, is available for a gift of any amount when you write or call. We encourage everyone to give because there's a blessing in giving. But if you're simply unable to afford it, Andrew and his partners will provide this book to you free of charge. You can become a Grace Partner or order resources through our website at awmi.net. While there, you can discover more product details and download additional free resources. Or you can call our helpline at 719-635-1111. 
Our helpline is open Monday through Friday, 24 hours a day, and Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mountain Time. To write us, use the address on your screen. We appreciate your generosity and hope to hear from you today. If you believe that God has been telling you to come to Karis Bible College, Campus Days is the perfect opportunity to see what it's really like. All it takes is one word from God to totally, totally, totally change your life. Did you know if you have a desire to be here, you've already got a word from God. If God has spoken to you, you've delighted yourself in the Lord, He's given you the desires of your heart, then you start moving. At Karis Bible College, all kinds of people are discovering God's love and the purpose He has for them. If God is calling you, come to Campus Days. You know, the Lord has given me a huge vision and we've been blessed up to this point, but I've still got so much that God's leading me to do. I'm believing God for 10,000 new partners. We've already got over $120 million worth of buildings in just the last nine years, but I've got at least $100 million worth maybe $200 million worth of buildings still in my heart for our students, for an activity center. We've got a new student housing that we've got a preliminary drawing of that is showing you a little idea of what it would look like. This one would house about 120 people. Our others are gonna be smaller with maybe somewhere around 40 people per dorm, but we need this student housing and we need people to become partners. I'm believing for 10,000 new partners. I would ask you to pray about it, and if the Lord says so, join with us and help us change people's lives through Karis Bible College. Bring Karis with you wherever you go with our new Karis app. Free to download the Karis app allows you to easily access everything Karis Bible College has to offer in one place. Receive exclusive Grace content and explore unique Karis features. Watch or listen to archived resources and teachings. Follow along with the Bible reading plan or listen to the audio Bible. Download your app today. God has provided healing in His atonement just as much as He provided forgiveness of sins. There's something about pressing against something and believing that it's possible before we see it in the natural. Grace enables us to do what only Jesus can do. It's the enabling presence, the enabling power of God 